cutting-edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. The hunters are out in Svalbard archipelago. A gun is essential here, a short distance from the North Pole where there are more polar bears than humans. But these hunters don't have bears in their sights because their quarry is the deadly heavy metal, mercury. They're European scientists and they want to know how and why so much mercury is deposited on the sheet ice and the surrounding glaciers. And they have good reason to be concerned. Here in the Arctic, we found mercury contaminating the food chain from the bottom to the top. And at the top of the food chain, there are the big predators, and there is man. We want to understand how the mercury gets into the food chain and why in an area which is so far away from any source and which appears so clean and pure, it is becoming so concentrated. The main sources of atmospheric mercury are mining and industrial combustion. A unique combination of chemical, physical and geographical conditions conspire to concentrate the mercury over the North Pole, falling on the ice sheet. When it's insoluble, mercury is harmless, but after reacting with Arctic bacteria and fungi, it's transformed into a highly toxic form called methyl mercury. As the snow and ice thaws, this toxic mercury seeps into the ocean, and there it's absorbed by plankton and so begins its journey up the food chain. Mercury is what scientists call bioaccumable. The further up the food chain it travels, the more concentrated it becomes. With humans at the top, some Nordic countries have even advised vulnerable groups not to eat too much of some North Atlantic fish. We want to find out if the mercury has maybe transformed into this toxic methyl mercury form where there's a threat to the food chain and therefore man. We're doing this research on a biological level. We filter the snow to isolate the bacteria in it and then we look to see if they're capable of reacting with mercury. And that's done in sophisticated microbiology labs back in mainland Europe. Researchers in central France have isolated at least 11 different types of Arctic bacteria that they suspect have the ability to change benign atmospheric mercury into the toxic methyl mercury. These are bacteria we found at the North Pole and extracted from the snow. It's very interesting. We want to know if they're going to react with mercury. They identify the bacteria and grow them on in a culture medium before they're frozen. By adding dilute mercury, Raphael and her fellow researchers are trying to establish how much of the metal is absorbed by the bacteria and the chemistry behind its transformation into methyl mercury. They believe their research is crucial to prevent what they consider a looming public health hazard in Europe. Mercury accumulates in the human body. Once it's in, it cannot leave. It tends to attach itself to proteins in the nervous system and the brain, and that leads to motor disorders, comparable to the trembling you see in someone who has Parkinson's disease, for instance. If the mercury fixes itself in the brain, you're going to find problems with the memory and irreversible motor problems. But health and environmental risks linked to mercury are not confined to the Arctic. In the French Alps, mercury concentrations are also setting challenges for researchers. 2,700 metres up in the French Alps lies Lake Bramont at the foot of the saint sorlin Glacier. The goal is to... The aim is to study the snow, the water and the ice, and if possible the fish, to see if there's heavy mercury contamination. We decided to come here to make a species comparison to see if there's the same problem here as exists in the North Pole. And it does exist, though not to the same degree. 
Researchers take samples of snow from different depths, the ice underneath and the water below that. And though it's at a lower level than in the Arctic, mercury concentration is nonetheless significant in this alpine lake, with no major pollution source nearby. Here I'm taking a snow sample from the surface. Logically, there's more mercury in the snow than in the water. In the water, there's about one nanogram of mercury per litre, but in the snow, there's about 12 nanograms per litre because the atmospheric deposits settle on the snow covering. It's much more diluted in the water. Researchers also know that the higher an alpine lake is, the more mercury it has to absorb, and so the more vulnerable it is to pollution. Researchers measure the temperature of the ice and water, its pH level and its conductivity and sophisticated instruments read the concentration of heavy metals. I view the lake as a living being. It has the ability to purify itself. Unfortunately, if there's too much of an influx of mercury, you reach the point when it simply can't cope and it's going to give up. And what lives there is going to be affected for generations to come. Because the present condition of the lake is the direct result of what happened during the Industrial Revolution. So preventative action from now on is a precautionary measure. So future generations will have an environment in a decent state. Correct. In the Arctic, the same idea is the driving force behind the work of hundreds of European researchers. Efforts to further understand how mercury affects the environment have intensified. European researchers estimate that in some Arctic fjords, the concentration of methyl mercury in marine organisms is a thousand times higher than in the water. And that is worrying the scientists. At 474 meters above sea level, the Zeppelin Mountain Weather Station in Svalbard monitors three different types of mercury in the air. Researchers estimate that around 300 tons of mercury falls from the sky every year onto the North Pole. Anna Steen is an environmental chemist specializing in atmospheric mercury. The problem is that we don't know how much is deposited, how much is re-emitted back to the atmosphere, how much is transported to, uh, to meltwater, and how much ends up in a fjord. We don't know what's going on, so we still need much more data to get the whole picture to understand what is actually happening. It's a race for knowledge and understanding. As the mercury falls on the polar wastes, scientists are continuing their quest to discover the implications of the concentrations in the snow. <laughs>